What's going on guys? So today I'm going to show you how to properly decode JSON data by making this cryptocurrency app right over here. I made it using the cryptocurrency API from CoinLore and I'll leave a link to that in the description as well as the starter project. Make sure you download that off of GitHub. And I don't know everything but I like to share what I do know so let's get straight into the video. So if you run the starter code this is what you should see. Right now we just have a simple collection view that has the same information throughout. This is going to be the name of the currency, the symbol of the currency, and the price in uh, US dollars of the currency. So let me just walk you through the code base and let you know what I wrote and what we're going to write. Inside the collection view controller, we have a currencies variable, which is going to hold our currencies that we get from the API. I changed the color of the status bar to white. I performed the API call that we're going to be using, but I haven't decoded any of the data yet. I added the header over here, specify the number of sections, set the number of items in a section to 20, and here's where we're gonna be creating our cell. Right now it's just the plain cell that we have in the storyboard. So you can see, if we quickly look at the storyboard, that the storyboard just has this plain cell with the um, beginner text. All I did inside of the network manager was have a fetch coins function that's going to make a call to the coin lore API and return the data from there. I haven't actually decoded it right here is where we're going to be doing a lot of work to actually decode it and send it back to our completion handler. So over here we have the coin header which just has the title which is crypto info. The coin cell is the cells that the coins are in obviously. And all I did was add some styling and added our three labels for the name, symbol, and price of the coin. And then inside of API objects, we have two empty structs, which is going to represent our data coming in from our API. So let's actually start off here. And we're going to go over and look at the API to see what type of data we're going to be getting. So over here, we can see an example of the type of data that we're going to be getting back from the API. What we have is a data object, which is going to have an array of coin information. So we can see over here, this is the Bitcoin information. We can see the ID, name, and so on. So we're going to have that. And we're also going to get back an info object, but we're not going to worry about that in this tutorial because we only care about the data. So what we have to do is model this inside of Swift. And we're going to do that using structs. So I'm just going to copy and paste this so I can put it in the comments and refer to it and just comment it out. And we're going to say that our CI response struct is going to represent the data object. So it's going to hold an array of the coin information and our CI currency is going to represent um, one coin. So what we want to do is for our struct, we're going to say let data be an array of CI currency. And we're going to make that an optional because you never know if you're calling this API on a blue moon and it doesn't return this information, you don't want your whole app to crash. So we're going to set that as optional and we're going to set all variables as optional just because you never really know. So next we have our CI currency and you can see here that some of the variables are actually going against the Swift convention of using like the camel format of naming a variable where you have the first word is all lowercase and then every word after that, the first letter of that word is capitalized. So you can see here like things like price USD are going against it. Instead, it should be price USD, you know, all caps for the USD or percent change, which would be percent change with a capital C and then 24 H. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow the Swift convention and I'm going to show you how to actually get around not having the same exact name as what's going to be given to you from the API. So what I'm going to do is just do let ID be a string, optional string, and I'm just going to do the rest and I'll talk to you guys in a second. So now we have an object that represents the data that's going to be sent back to us from the coin API. And you can see I've marked the ones that don't match exactly the data that we're going to be getting back. So you can see name ID, the I and D is capitalized, but over here it's all lowercase. Percent change 24H has um, underscores. So how do we deal with that? 
Well, we're going to create an enum called coding keys, which is going to inherit from string and then conform to the coding key protocol. And in here, we're going to create a case statement for each variable that we have listed over here. And for the variables that don't exactly match our JSON variable names, we are going to specify the JSON variable names so that when it's being decoded, it'll be able to tell which what to match it to. So I'll do an example of something that doesn't match like percent change 24h we do case percent change 24h and we're going to set it equal to percent underscore change underscore 24h so what that is doing is telling the decoder that the percent change 24h written in the camelback style is the same as percent change with underscores so you have to do that for every single variable here but you only have to specify the json name if it doesn't exactly match. So something like case ID, you just write case ID and go on to the next. So I'm just gonna write them all out and I'll talk to you in a second. All right, so I've written everything out. You can see the ones that have been changed are now matching the JSON data. So when the decoder tries to decode the JSON data, everything should be fine. So next we're gonna jump over to the network manager file and actually decode the information. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just hide my side panels by pressing Command-0 and Command-Option-0 just to give myself a bit more room. Now, I'm assuming you already know how to perform a simple HTTP request, which is why I wrote out the basic code of it. If you don't, let me know and I can make a separate video on that. Now, right over here is where we actually have our data, so let's decode it. To decode it, what you want to do is let currencies equal a JSON decoder object, and we're going to just use an empty initializer, and we're going to use the decode method. Now, you can see that the decode method takes in two things, the data and an object that conforms to the decodable protocol. Now, something I forgot to do, actually, is set our objects to conform to that. So let's just jump over back into our API objects file and say that our structs conform to codable, which is a mix of encodable and decodable. So I'm just gonna say that for the CI response as well. And now we're good to go. So let's head over back to the network manager and we're gonna say our CI response dot self is what we want to get back from the decoder. And the data that we wanted to decode is the coin data. Now this can fail, so what we're going to need is actually, you can either do a do try catch or you can do an optional try where it will try to do this and if it fails, it'll just return nil. So with that done, we're going to call the completion handler and pass in the currencies object that we got. And I'll just remove this comment or the print statement. And now if we save this, and head over to our collection view, we will see that right here, I'm performing the network call and I'm getting it with the coins object. So let's just print coins and see if we got the proper data. All right, so now we can see that all of the coin information is coming in properly. They're all optionals because that's what we set them to. And now let's finish this off by displaying it inside of our collection view cells. The first thing that you want to change is heading over to the currencies array and actually changing that from being an any object array to a CI currency object array. And then once we've received the data back from our network call, we want to set our currency array to that by doing self.currencies equal coins dot data. And if that is nil, we are just going to have an empty array. And then once this is done, we want to reload our collection view. That way it'll actually present the data. And you have to do that on the main thread because you're uh, changing the UI. So what you want to do is dispatch q.main.async. And then we're just going to say data. Awesome. So we can also remove this print statement because we don't need it anymore. Now let's go ahead and change the number of cells inside the collection view from being the hard coded value of 20 to being whatever amount of currencies we have by doing currencies.count. And finally, let's go ahead and change the cells to show the data that's coming in from our API. So let's say our current 
Bitcoin is equal to currencies at the index path dot row. And then we can change our coin cell to match the information by doing coin cell dot name label equals current coin dot name or actually name label dot text sorry coin cell dot symbol label dot text is equal to the current coin dot symbol and our coin cell dot price USD dot text is equal to current coin dot price USD and let's just add a dollar sign in between there and we'll say if that's no just use zero as the default so everything should be good to go and if we run this hopefully we'll see all of our information all right so now we can see that the app is displaying all the currency information from the api call it decoded successfully and everything's good to go i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know if you have any questions in the comments Thanks for watching.